Bruce Kyle presiding. Please be seated. You ready? For the record, both assistant state attorneys are present, all four defense counsel and Mr. Rogers. State, you ready? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, sir. Who's your first witness? The state will be calling Myra Simmons. Any issues before we bring out the jurors? Your Honor, the state did review with Mr. Darrow this morning the specific exhibits that the state will be using with Myra Simmons. So we have looked at those ahead of time. Okay. Any issues? Um, they've all been provided in discovery. There are legal issues as to the admissibility, but I don't think those can be addressed until we see what the witnesses say. Okay. And who's after Ms. Simmons? The state will be calling Suzanne Buchhofer. Okay. There are exhibits with Suzanne Buchhofer. Again, the state has uh, shown to Mr. Darrow the specific exhibits the state Bless. will be using. Okay. And so that's the same situation. The, the, there's no discovery issue or anything like that. They've all previously been provided to me. Um, however, whether or not the state can lay a predicate for their admissibility and reliability, we need to figure with the witnesses. Uh, Darrow, those exhibits, but um, they are two business record certifications of which we filed a notice of intent for phone records that during Ms. Simmons' testimony, the state will be moving into evidence. Um, are they, what, they, are, they are, are they subject of the motion and hearing we already had? Yes, they were, Your Honor. Okay. Um, and those are just for Mr. Darrow, the 858-336-2941 and the 404-376-8649. And Judge, what, if, if it's okay with the court, I think I can preserve it just by saying pretrial motion and proper certification without us having to approach and slow things down. Yes, sir. I don't have an additional argument. And Noted the, for the record. Thank you. And the final thing to just note with this, and again, I don't believe it's an issue, but the um, certification that AT&T sent was both for the 404 and for the 702 984 <coughs> number. I believe those records are and they, aligned. So, right. Yes. So, That's the same situation. I just okay. wanted to clear on the record. So those are the only two additional things the state would be um, using. So I'll just, I'm going to renew it at the time, but I'll keep it very <coughs> do it. Yes, sir. All right. Anything else? Your live stream's okay? I'm fine with what... You've got it set up. It, it is what it is. I'm ready to go forward. Okay. Bring them out. Please be seated. I'll ask our jurors again, did you follow my instructions, not talk about the case among yourselves with anybody else or look up any of the people or places involved? Even if you did so inadvertently, now would be the time to raise your hand and let me know. For the record, no jurors lifted their hand. Next witness. The state calls Myra Simmons. Myra Simmons. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Would you state your name for the record, please? Yes, Mara Simmons. And would you spell your last name for our court, first and last name for our court reporter? M-Y-R-A-S-I-M-M-O-N-S. And, Ms. Simmons, where do you work? Lee County Sheriff's Office. And how long have you worked for the Lee County Sheriff's Office? Since 2006. And in what capacity do you work with the Sheriff's Office? Analyst. And um, what do you do as an analyst? I do investigative research for the detectives, and I analyze call detail records. And do you have a specialty even within that? Uh, yes, I uh, do a lot of investigative uh, on the cell phones. Um, 
Before we continue, do you have any training or experience in the area of investigative techniques or regarding cell phones? Yes, I worked for the federal government for 15 years, and I have training in investigative techniques. And since you have come to the Lee County Sheriff's Office, have you had additional training? Yes, I've had two courses on cell phone investigation, and uh, at least once a month I take webinars to refresh my skills. And have you all... Oh, thank you. Were you asked by the detectives at LCSO to assist in some part of the investigation regarding the death of Teresa Sievers? Yes, ma'am. And what were you asked initially to do? I was asked to research if burner phones or prepaid phones was used by Mr. Wright or Mr. Sievers. And were you provided any information to assist you in beginning that investigation? Yes, he said that the phones... Sustained. And did you end up using that information to assist you in your investigation? Yes. And were you provided... Uh, when did you begin your investigation? Around January or February of 2016. And what were your first steps in this investigation? Request a um, tower dump for the Jarvis Street or the scene of the homicide area. And was there a particular? Okay. And was there a particular date for which which you wanted to see the tower dump for that area? Yes, that would be June the 28th of 2015, the date of the homicide. And did you request any other tower dump information? Yes, I required one for May the 17th at uh, the um, Chapel Hill, Missouri, of Mr. Wright's residence. And what is a tower dump? A tower dump is where you request a cell phone provider to, um, such as AT&T, Sprint, or um, Metro, to provide all cell phone numbers that have pinged off the closest tower to a particular residence. It sounds like what you receive are cell phone numbers uh, with location and date. Is that correct? Correct. Now, you use the word ping. What is ping as you use the word or pinging? Ping is when the cell phone tower sends a signal to the cell phone and the cell phone responds its location. So let's return to the, the tower dumps. Did you, by search warrant, end up having the information for the tower dump uh, near Jarvis Road on June 28th yes, of 2015. Now, had you, were there certain area codes that you were going to search in this particular tower dump? Yes. And what were those area codes that you were going to search? Georgia and California. And was that because of information you've been provided? Yes, ma'am. And did you know the Georgia and California cell phone codes by heart? No, I uh, got a map with all the area codes for each state. And, and as you were going to look for these area codes, did you look for all of them simultaneously? No. So did you start with a particular uh, area code? Um, no, I started with uh, the Georgia area codes. And did you look at all the, you mentioned Sprint and I think Metro and AT&T, did you look at all of those carriers' cell tower information simultaneously in that cell tower? No. Dump? Is that a no? That's a no. Sorry. Um, did you pick a particular uh, carrier to start with? Yes, I took AT&T. And why did you start with AT&T? Because Mr. Sievers and Mr. Wright both have AT&T carriers on their personal cell phone. Now, when you obtained this tower dump information from AT&T, what did you do with it? I took the information and I put it into a program called Cellhawk. And what is Cellhawk? Cellhawk is a uh, software program that analyzes and maps call detail records. 
can you, with CellHawk, create visual representations of the information uh, contained within the tower dumps? Yes. Is there an advantage to using CellHawk versus another software program? Uh, yes. They, AT&T provides all the phone records, which is thousands and thousands of pages, in a PDF. And I can just drag them and drop them and put them into their system in minutes. It analyzes them. Now, the analyzing that CellHawk is going to do, is that something a person could do individually? Um, yes, but I don't think it would be in my lifetime I could finish it. Let's talk about the um, information that you dragged and dropped dumped or put into to cell hawk. Um, you indicated earlier you had these area codes and you started with Georgia. For the first area code that you put into cell hawk to run and see if it was in the tower dump, did, did anything come up? No. Did there eventually come one of the Georgia area codes that you put in that actually popped, if you will, yes. on? And what area code was that? That was 405. And did you get the full number for that area code? The the four did you say four zero five? Is yeah, that what that you word. said? Or did you say are you sure that it's four zero five or was it a different area code? I don't I have my notes. I, um, Did you take notes that might refresh your recollection? Yeah. No, I don't have it. I just have the other. 404. 404. And was that the number 404-376-8649? Yes. It's sustained. Can you tell us what the number was? Yes, 404-376-8649. And when you um, and when you saw that not that particular number, did you ask um, did you ask that a, a search warrant be obtained to receive those records? Yes, I did. I want to show you what's been marked for identification as State's Exhibit Number Seventy Six. And ask you. So look at state 76. Can you identify what state 76 is? I think there's a disk underneath the top of the paper. Yes, it's the phone records for eight, from AT&T for 404-376-8649. And the number And did you review the disk itself that's there to make sure that those were the records that were received? Yes, I did. And did you in any way note on that disk that you had reviewed it? Yes, I initialed it and dated it. And do we see the initials on that particular disk? Yes. Move to introduce the exhibit, Your Honor. We'll show your objection renewed for the record and overruled, and we'll show it admitted. Thank you. What's the exhibit number again? The exhibit number, Your Honor, is 76. Thank you. you do next after coming up with this this uh, 404-376-8649 number? We did a search warrant on that number and I received the uh, results and put it into CellHawk. Did you then continue and uh, do research uh, the other tower dump to which you referred, the May 17th tower dump out of Missouri? Yes, I did. Um, I searched for that 404 area code and it came up on the tower dump close to Mr. Wright's uh, residence and it also I noticed on that tower dump and the one and the Jarvis Street tower dump it was the both same IMEI number which is the International Mobility Equipment Identifier which is like a VIN number in a card it stays with that phone so I was pretty confident it was the same phone used at Jarvis Street and the one up so you're Missouri. saying that the 404 number that you saw on the cell tower of Jarvis Street on June 28th, you also saw that, saw that 404 number May 17th 
in the tower dump for uh, near Chapel Hill, Missouri? Yes. And that it had the same IME number? IME on number. Mm -hmm. And is that what you were talking about is like, what did you just say it's like? It's like a VIN number on a car. It stays with that car. That number stays with that phone. And um, did you notice anything else when you saw that 404 number come up on the tower dump that was near uh, the tower that was near the Chapel Hill Court address in Missouri? Mm. That it was the same phone used at both locations. Okay. Um, let me let me just switch for a minute. Did you um, did you end up continuing your investigation uh, into the use of that number, that 404 number? Yes. And did you provide that information to the detectives? Yes. Okay. What type of information? And you obtained those records from AT&T, what type of information is provided to you on the records that you receive from AT&T? You will get the date, the time, incoming and outgoing phone numbers, longitude and latitude, the asthma, the direction of, and what kind of uh, communication. Was it data, phone, text message, or an app running, data? data. If I could just approach the clerk and get uh, State's Exhibit 68. You may. Hmm? Excuse me. I could approach and get 75. From the clerk here. Yes, ma'am. and show you what has already been introduced into evidence as State's Exhibit Number 75. Did you have to review the personal cell phone records of Curtis Wayne Wright as you were conducting your analysis? Yes, ma'am. And our, our, what's in Exhibit 75, the personal cell phone records of Curtis Wayne Wright? Correct. And from those personal cell phone records, were you able to determine what his actual cell phone, personal cell phone number was? Yes. And was that, I think that number is contained on those records that you're holding in your hand, but was that 341-966-9581? 314-996-9581. Thank you. And did you do anything when you, did you... Uh, do something with Mr. Wright's personal cell phone records while you were conducting your cell hawk, uh, while you were using cell hawk to look at the phone records from these various locations? Yes, I put it into the system where it mapped the calls and analyzed the calls. And when you put Mr. Wright's personal cell number into the system as you were analyzing the tower dump for Chapel Hill Court, did you notice anything, or did anything come to your attention? Yes, up came... Hold on a second, ma'am. Yes, sir. <clears throat> talking about the records that um, you were looking at in the tower that uh, was the tower that was near the Chapel Hill Court in Missouri. 
um, which was the May 17th tower dump. Um, did you notice anything regarding the numbers 404 and the uh, uh, number, excuse me, and the uh, 341 numbers? Yes. And what did you notice? I noticed that the uh, personal cell phone of Mr. Wright and that uh, 404 burner phone pinged off the same tower almost at the same time. They both laid their heads on the same tower. Did you then... Um, run a number on, did you then look for the phone records, you indicated that you had obtained the phone records for the 404 number, um, which we've introduced into evidence. Did you then look for any numbers in that 404? Did you then examine, did you then look for particular numbers that might come to your attention when you examine the phone records for the number 404? Yes, in the cell phone records, I ran a report that showed all the numbers that were called from that phone, and I noticed an 858 number, area code from California. And why did that 858 number come to your attention? What made it pop for you? I was uh, given information that could possibly be a California area code. So when you saw that 858 number, did you then request... Uh, phone records for that 858 number. Yes, I did. I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification in State's Exhibit number 79. If I might approach the witness, Your Honor. You may. Do you recognize State's Exhibit number 79? Yes, I do. And are those the uh, cell phone records that were obtained for the number eight, the 858 number? Yes, it is. And is there a disk attached to those pieces of paper? Yes. And did you review that disk to make sure those were the 858 numbers that were received pursuant to the search warrant? Yes, I did. And are those the same records? Yes. Moved to, inter moved to introduce. Judge Stanley, objection to this record. Oh, your pen, man. Your previous objections noted for the record overruled, and we'll show it in a minute. Uh, uh, State's Exhibit Number 79. Now, what did you do with those records that you obtained for the number for the 858 number? I put them into the cell uh, program. And when you put them into the cell hawk program, did you notice anything? Or what did you observe or what did you notice that came to your attention? I noticed the mapping of where it pinged from. It pinged from the, only in the southwest Florida area. So you saw nothing pinging outside of the southwest Florida area? Nothing. And then did you look for the, did you further look to see if there was any indication of the numbers 404 or 858 having communicated with each other? Yes, I saw that they, those two numbers had, had ingoing and outgoing and text messages to each other. Let me go back to that um, 858 number. Okay. And you said you only saw ping in southwest Florida. When did you determine was the first time that it pinged? On May the 7th, 2015. And were you able from the records that were obtained to determine about what time or what time that first ping occurred? Mm. Are you having to refer to your notes to try and Yeah, but I still, I don't remember the exact time. But there was a specific time on those records that showed when it first pinged. Correct. And were you able to determine what might have been near to uh, the tower where that phone number first pinged? Yes, it was a Walmart. 
closest tower to a Walmart. And were you able to determine the location of that tower that was near the Walmart where you first saw the 858 number ping? Yes. And where was the lo general location of that tower? Um, it was in Bonita Springs. Oh, no, it was in Naples. I'm sorry. Off of Immokalee Road. I don't recall my memory. And ultimately, because of that information, did you request uh, records for a track phone? Yes, I did. And from those records, were you able to determine... From those records, were you able to deter determine um, the location where the cell phone was purchased? Yes. I want to show you what's been marked for identification at State's Exhibit Number 67. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Based on that information that you received, did you put a certain address into Cellhawk? Yes, I put the Walmart that the phone was purchased off the track phone. And And were you provided then call records from AT&T for, for the 314-239-017? Let me withdraw that question for just a moment, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to hand you what's already in evidence is States Exhibit 80, which are phone records for cell number 314-239-0173. records in States Exhibit number 80? Yes, I did. And did you have an opportunity to review those records? I have not initialed. You didn't initial, but did you are review they? the records? Yes. For, and are those the records for Mark Seaver's personal cell phone? Yes. When you put those, did you then uh, put those records into uh, cell phone? Yes. And were you able to compare the phone records from his personal cell to the phone records that you received for the 858 area? Code? Yes, I did. And what did you find when you did that comparison? That Mr. Seaver's personal cell and the burner phone. Yes. What did you? What did you um, I did observed you? that Mr. Seaver's personal phone and the uh, prepaid phone, burner phone eight five eight, they both laid their heads on the same tower within minutes of each other. <clears throat> Judge, can I just do an ongoing objection to the grounds that we've Yes, sir. Noted for the record. Thank you. Standing objection. And was there something within those cell records um, of the uh, Mr. Seaver's personal cell to that caught your attention? Something that you read in those records that caught your attention back on from the May 7th date? Yes. And what was that? That Mr. Seaver's personal cell phone pinged at that Walmart location. And then a few minutes later, the uh, burner phone, that uh, 858, 
pain shortly thereafter. And when you then reviewed the records that have been provided, was there a particular SMS message that came to your attention? Yes. And what was that SMS message? On May 17th, around 8.11 p.m., Mr. Seaver sent a SMS message to Mr. Wright's personal phone saying, Hello, brother, from Ann. Can you give me just a moment? Yes, ma'am. If you guys need to approach, you may. No, let me re let me rephrase the question. We'll show it withdrawn. Withdrawn. Thank you. What I want to ask is for May seventh, the first day that you saw the eight five eight number activate. Later in that day, was there an SMS message on uh, from that phone on May 7th? No, it's May 17th. Did you... Did you then look at the... Uh, Was there a download of uh, the burner phone that, was there a download, excuse me, of Mr. Seaver's phone that was done by, through Cellbrite at the Lee County Sheriff's Office? Yes. And did you find anything in that particular download that was done by the Lee County Sheriff's Office significant as you were analyzing your uh, phone? As yes. You were an placing the phone records into CellHawk and then analyzing them, both the tower dumps and the phone records. Yes. And what is that that you found significant? I found that text message from Mr. Seavers to Mr. Wright on May the 17th at 8, 11 p.m. stating, Hello, brother. Can both sides approach. this information and you found that particular uh, text message um, and did you indicate what time that text message was? Around 8, 11 p.m. What did you then do with the records that you had for those two numbers, the 404 number and the 858 number? I did an analytical search. I uh, put in the times and noticed that um, Mr. Seaver's uh, phone pinged at his, I think it was around his residence, I'm not for sure, but it was in southwest Florida. And then I showed that Mr. Wright's phone pinged up in um, Missouri at the Chapel Hill residence around the same time. So I knew. And then after seeing Mr. Seaver's personal cell and Mr. Wright's personal cell ping in those two locations, locations at about the same time, what did you next see in the records? I saw the two burner phones, the 404 and the 858, pinging a few minutes later in the same area. So for the for Mr. Seaver's personal cell, um, which, which of the burner phones pinged around that same time in that same area? Which number? Was that the 858? Yes. And for Mr. Wright's personal cell, um, in Missouri, which burner phone was it that was pinging right about the same time? The 404. And 
do the records reflect, I'm not asking you, but do the records reflect um, that came from Selhawk, the times of those particular phones pinging? Yes. And did you run reports from Selhawk or create maps from Selhawk to reflect the information that you found contained in these phone records? Yes, I did. And did you create a map in Selhawk reflecting the tower pings for these two phone numbers. Yes, I did. So I want to start with um, the tower hits to which you referred for Mark Sievers' personal cell, 314-239-0173, and the burner phone that you've been referring to, 858 336-2941. Now, you indicated that the first day that the 858 number was activated was May 7th. Is correct. That correct? Mm -hmm. And what was the last day that you saw any activity on the phone records? I believe it's June the 26th, 2015. I want to show you what the state has marked for identification as State's Exhibit 100. Yes, sir, we'll show your objections renewed for the record. Is this the uh, map that that you, um, that Selhawk printed? Yes, yes, ma'am. Move to introduce state's exhibit number 100. You renew your objections at this time. We'll show them uh, renewed at this time, overruled, and we'll show it admitted. Permission to publish. You may. Council needs to move to see the map at any time. You may. I got a clear view, man. You can step anywhere you want over here. Ms. Simmons, can you see what we're looking at in State Exhibit 100 from where you're seated? Yes. So there are different colors on the map. So if you could first tell us what the different colors are. The red is uh, Mr. Seaver's personal cell, and the blue is the burner or prepaid phone. For the 858. 858, yes. Now, there are times where we just see the red. And then there are times where we see dark blue, and there are times where we see like, I don't know, light purple. What would those distinctions be? The red means it, which is his personal cell phone, he just pinged in that area. But the red and blue shows you that they both laid their head on the same tower. And that's the closest tower, I believe, to um, the homicide scene. Exhibit 100. I'm going to give you this pen if you don't want to put it in anyone's eyes. But if you push this little silver button, it actually um, emits a little laser. Can you show the ladies? If you need to step down, you can. But can you show them on this map where the location of Jarvis Road is noted? And does this map include all of the tower hits for that particular burner phone number? And that was the time. So it doesn't show the tower hits that started on May 7th, but does it for May 17th to June 28th, correct? Thank you very much. Yes. 
And did you use the same dates on that, May 17th through June 20th? Correct, yes. And it states exhibit number 101, that particular map that was produced. Yes. Moved to introduce. Objection. Objections noted for the record. It showed overruled and it's admitted. Permission to publish. <coughs> you may. <coughs> That's Mr. Wright's personal cell. And the uh, purple or magenta, the other <laughs> color, um, for that other color, what does that color reflect? That reflects the burner phone 404. Okay. 376-8649? Correct. And there are on this, and you may need to step down because they are small. There are a couple of uh, pins, so to speak, that are on this. In the lower part of the exhibit, there's a ping in the middle of a, and, and the, uh, a little bit further north, and I guess east, if this were a map, as it is, there's another ping. What are those two, those two pins represent? This one represents Mr. Did you also uh, have a log, uh, a log for the two burner phones, 404 and 858? Yes, I did. And I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 102. Is this that log? Yes, it is. Moved, introduced. No objection. We'll show it admitted. Other than the previous ones, it's based on. Noted for the record from before. Permission yes, to publish. Yes, ma'am. And is what is this? I ran a uh, call record between the two phones and see how often they communicated with each other. And does this exhibit, 102, reflect all the calls between 404 and 858? Correct. And that is all the calls for the entire time that you had put for any records that you saw, correct? Between those two numbers, correct. So when the top number date is May 17th, that would indicate the first time those two, that either of those numbers spoke with each other, correct. Each other. And the last date is 625. Would that be the last time? Correct. Now, on this, there are certain pieces of information we see in the columns. So can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what they're seeing in each of those columns? I'll have to look.
at some different questions now for just a couple minutes. I'm sorry. that we saw reflected in State's Exhibit 102 for number 404. Did 404 make a whole lot of other calls besides those we saw reflected? A few, but not mostly to that other number, 858. And the number 858, did it make a whole lot of other calls to other numbers? Very few. Now, did you also review in CellHawk the records for a phone number 573-864-1179? I don't recall whose number that was. Did you also uh, review the records in CellHawk for a, no a phone number that was for the phone records of Jimmy Ray Rogers? On the, on the two phone numbers? or No, no, I'm sorry. I did ask a confusing question. Yeah. Moving on. Let's move now to June 25th. So we're done with Mr. talking about the burner phones, and we're done talking about the personal cells okay. of Mr. Seavers and Mr. Wright. And we're just going to move on now okay. to um, a later time, specifically June 28th. Okay. Did you put into CellHawk the personal phone records for uh, Jimmy Ray Rogers? Yes. And were you, from putting in those phones, able to uh, ascertain where that phone might have been uh, on June 28th? Yes, I did. And from that, did you create, uh, or did CellHawk actually create, uh, a couple of charts showing where that particular phone number pinged on June 28th? Yes. And let me show you... Um, let me show you that uh, what's been marked as States Exhibit Number 103. Now, was this uh, were these maps that were uh, produced by CellHawk? Yes. Pertaining to those phone numbers for Jimmy Ray Rogers. Correct. Okay. Let me show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 103. Yes. Is that, are those the maps that were created using CellHawk to reflect the um, tower hits or to reflect a couple of tower hits of the phone of Jimmy Ray Rogers? Correct. Moved to introduce. <coughs> Same objections? Yes, Your Honor. Noted for the record, overruled, we'll show it admitted. Permission to publish. You may. You could just step down for a moment. Like 
And then there's a second map on the other side. What does that second map show? I'm showing that it's in the direction as the asthma. And so this is the the tower, and it's pointing in this direction. I'm going away. And then it gets road, or it's in that general area of the uh, homicide center. And is that a call for at the that was made at the same time or at a different time? Well, this is the first and last call. In other words, it takes a hit on the tower. The first call, it was traveling and it took another hit, so it'd be the same time. Same time frame. Yeah, it's the same time. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Did you also, using CellHawk, create a map of all of the uh, tower hits for Jimmy Ray Rogers' phone number? Um, for Jimmy Ray Rogers' phone number? Yes, I did. And with that, for the time period we're talking about, 628 or 629, that yes. in June. Um, I want to show you what's been marked for identification as States Exhibit 104. Yes. Is this the map that was created by Cellhawk reflecting all the tower hits? Yes. Move to introduce States Exhibit 104. Objection, scientific basis. Your objection is noted for the record, overruled. We'll show it admitted. Permission to publish. You may. We're looking at phone pings on Mr. Rogers' personal cell, and it shows it traveling down to uh, southwest Florida. And are those pings in that kind of purpley color? Yes. I noticed that there are two pins on this exhibit, pins that have been mm -hmm. placed, so to speak. What do those pins represent? The one in Missouri is Mr. Uh, Wright's residence, and the other one is the scene of the homicide. Residence you pinged, or was it Mr. Rogers' residence you pinged? I'm sorry, Mr. Rogers. And then the ping on the bottom was, you said? The homicide scene. The Jarvis Road? Yes. And again, this was a map that uh, Cellhawk produced from the information that had been uploaded from the towers. Yes, call detail records. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Could you give me just one? I'm, I don't yes, have any further exhibits. Okay. Could you just give me one moment, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. I think you testified early, just a few minutes ago about when you were reviewing the uh, cell phone records in State's Exhibit 25A that there were a couple of um, there were a couple of. Uh, messages that you found significant. Yes, I did. Um, I want to refer you to States Exhibit 25A, specifically page 41096, um, and ask you if these are the messages to which you were referring. And I'm trying to make the little tab go where it should go. There you go. Are these the messages, and you can take a moment to look at it. Okay. Are these the messages to which you were referring? Yes. Yes, it is. And then if you could give me one more moment, Your Honor. And on that record that you're looking, what is the date that's reflected on those messages? May 17th. And um, let me just ask you, a, uh, I think you've explained this to the jury, but let me just ask you one more question. What's the function of a cell tower? It receives the... Uh, it sends a signal to the cell phone, and the cell phone responds by giving its location and the time and date. 
So is that how our cell phones work by going from towers? I mean, is I, or is a tower? What's the purpose of a tower for a phone company? To receive the uh, signal so you can com communicate. I have no further questions. Thank you very much. Thanks. Your Honor, if I might retrieve the exhibit. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Morning. Morning. Sure, it's still morning. You testified that you reviewed the uh, records for two two phones that you referred to as burner phones, correct? Burner prepaid phone, yes, sir. And you attributed one of those to Mark Seavers and one of those to Curtis Wayne, right? I didn't identify their names, no. Okay. Those particular, well, you, you did earlier, though. Today you testified as to who you thought each phone belonged I to. Could... Objection, misstatement of the evidence. I'll let you rephrase your question. Those two particular, I'll, I'm going to move on, that doesn't matter. Um, those two particular, quote unquote, burner phones didn't make any phone calls to the phone that you identified in your testimony today as belonging to Jimmy Ray Rogers, did they? The uh, burner prepaid phones? Yes. yes. No. No phone no calls, calls between them. Yes, no sir. No text between them? No, sir. No electronic connection between them and Mr. Rogers whatsoever? Right. No, sir. And you didn't analyze any second, quote, unquote, burner phone for Mr. Rogers, did you? No. Let's talk about the maps you generated. Um, do you have training in how cell phone towers work? Yes. Cellhawk provides us detailed training of of how it produces its mapping. That's Cellhawk. Do you have training on how this particular cell tower, the technology used by cell phone towers? Uh, I've had a two-week course in mapping and analysis. That was Cellhawk, correct? No, it was separate. And then I had Cellhawk. That's mapping their data, correct? Mm -hmm. you, so you don't know how the actual cell tower works? Not as an expert witness, but I do understand how what happens, yes. Okay, let's talk about the, the range of towers. Do you know how what cell phone towers ranges are? It depends. Okay. Some it depends on the particular tower? Correct. If you're driving along, your cell phone's gonna pick up the best signal. Not necessarily the closest tower, correct? Correct. Okay. And the uh, range of different towers can be different depending on the technology in that tower, correct? Correct. So I, I would I want to ask you a question about the exhibit one hundred. Can I, can I have exhibit 100? On this particular exhibit, I have to just give me a second. Um, does the size of the circle represent the cell phone tower range? Um, no, that just represents the tower, okay, probably so in the middle. That's just where the tower. Why is it so big? Well, I did it for uh, visual purposes. Okay, so it doesn't mean that the phone was in the area of the circle. Correct. My next question was going to be whether the, the purple phone <laughs> had a better range for that phone than the other. No. No. Okay, so that's just to show where it was. A little dot would have sufficed. Yes, I could have done it in a wedge, but I, for visual purposes, I did it in circles. Okay, so you got to choose how to do that. Yes. Okay, that's all I had on that. In the several exhibits you, you that you generated um, that used wedges, since you mentioned wedges, you used a 120 degree wedge. Can you explain to the jury why? That gives you the azimuth of the direction of the cell phone travels. So in, right in the middle of that wedge is the tower, and then it shows you the direction of it. And how does the cell phone tower tell the direction? It seems it uh, goes on the quadrant of where it pinged off of. Because of the... Each there's hole. three, yes. There's three. Okay, there's so three actually, sides. It's not really a quadrant, it's three. Right? Yeah. Okay. Thank so that's you. why 120. <laughs> 120. 120 plus 120 plus 120, 120. That gives you full 360 coverage. Correct. And pretty much all cell phones have, towers have a signal detector on each of those three sections, correct? Correct. Okay, so 120 would be the right... Would, right would terminology. Be, would, would make sense. Do going with the technology, correct? 
Correct. Okay. Now, for some of um, for some of the maps you generated, did you utilize historical precision, precision location information from AT and T records? Historical precision? I don't know. I can show you. Well, it's it. it you, you you talked about you familiar with phone records, correct? Yes. Um, I mean, I can refer you to page 62, 488. This is from Exhibit 76, which is in evidence dealing with the 404-376-8649. Can I approach so she can take a look at this? Yes, sir. You're talking about the location accuracy or the longitude and latitude? I I'm just talking that information. Did you use yes. some of that information in generating your... And did Selhawk use some of that information? In yes. yes. Can you read to the jury what AT&T says about that information at the top of the page? It says the results provided are AT&T's best estimate of the location of the target number. Please exercise caution in using these records for investigative purposes as location data is sourced from various databases, which may cause location results to be less than exact. And can I approach you get that? Yes, sir. So AT&T itself is saying be very careful when using this data because it may be inaccurate. Of course. Okay. That's all I have, Judge. asked you about circles and wedges. Uh, is that something you can request from uh, Selhawk to How I display, display it, as a circle, a circle or a wedge? Correct. And when you asked for the display of a wedge, was there a reason you asked for the display of a wedge? Yes. Uh, the reason I do that is it shows me the direction the cell phone was traveling. So the wedge reflects direction of travel? Correct. The azimuth. Is there a difference between something being exact and something being inaccurate? No. Oh, definitely. I have nothing further, Your Honor. That's just one follow-up. Sure. When you look at those wedges on the maps, mm -hmm. they give you a direction, correct? Correct. That's what you testified to. The actual size of the wedge is a default from Selhawk, correct? We can make it as long or short as we want to, but it shows us the direction. It has nothing to do with the distance. Absolutely. So that wedge could extend out <laughs> further or closer as far as the actual cell phone tower coverage. Correct. Thank you. I have nothing further. Thank you. this to be released or retained? Yes, this way to be retained because there may be another matter to which you need to address. Ma'am, you're subject to recall. We'll let you know if you need it again. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any of our jurors need a restroom break? No hands. Okay. Next witness. Okay. So if you just, just give us a moment. Okay. And I'm going to return to the clerk, I believe, the three exhibits that are in my possession. Actually, Your Honor, if you don't need this, I'll just go ahead. Okay. On our state calls, uh, Winston Chambers. Chambers. Sorry. Winston Chambers. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you.
Good morning, sir. Good morning. Can you please state your full name for the record? Uh, Winston Chambers. And how do you spell your last name, sir? C-H-A-M-B-E-R-S. Sir, where are you currently uh, currently employed? Uh, track phone wireless. And um, what do you do for track phone wireless? Uh, I'm a manager for our subpoena compliance department. And as a manager for, for the subpoena compliance department, what are your duties? Um, we receive subpoenas, court orders, search warrants, and uh, have a group of individuals that process those. And um, how long have you been working for Track Phone Wireless? Uh, 18, 18 years. What is the nature of the business of Track Phone Wireless? A uh, prepaid cell phone company. And um, in order for Track Phone to conduct business as a prepaid cell phone company, uh, does Track Phone maintain records of um, phones and phone numbers? Yes, sir. What about the locations of purchase? Um, does Track Phone maintain records of an area of a, of a place where a phone was purchased? Uh, yes, sir. Um, what about account information? Is that something track phone also has to maintain a record of? Yes, sir. Are those records maintained in a normal course of business of track phone? Yes. Let me be specific. I'm going to show you um, what's been previously marked as states exhibit 67 for the record page numbers 46448, 46449, 46450, 455, 457. And four, five, six. I'm going to show you State's Exhibit number 67. I'm going to ask you if you recognize 67. See the exhibit? Yeah. I'm sorry, I read off the page numbers. I thought you heard the page numbers. Here you go. was been previously marked and identified as Stacy's exhibit number 67. Can you take a moment, please, and review that record? Have you had an opportunity to review it? Yes, sir. Um, what is uh, what is contained in the records at Stacy's exhibit number 67? Uh, we have subscriber information as well as point of purchase information. And is that record a record that was uh, created by Track Phone Wireless? Uh, yes. And is that record made in the normal course of business of Track Phone Wireless? Yes, sir. And is it made at or near the time of the events depicted within the record? Yes. And um, do you keep those records in a normal course of business? Yes. And are they made by a person acting in a normal course of business? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, the state would admit state's exhibit number 67 and the evidence of state 67. No objection, Judge. We should have admitted. And uh, can you ex uh, explain to the jury uh, what that, what First of all, is that record the record of a track phone? Yes, sir. And what's the phone number associated with the track phone? Uh, it's 858-336-2941. And uh, what, is, what was the location or purchase of that track phone? Uh, it's a Walmart store. Okay. And uh, does it have the address for the Walmart? The address is uh, 5420 Juliet Boulevard, Naples, Florida. Three four one zero nine. Thank you, Your Honor. We tender the witness. Thanks. Morning. Morning. Uh, there's nothing in the records that, that have any indication that uh, Mr. Rogers had anything to do with that phone, is there? 
As far as a name, uh, don't recall seeing a name. No, there's no name. Okay. And, and uh, the states throughout their case has been referring to this type of phone as a burner phone. These phones are used for legitimate purposes, are they not? That's correct. Thank you. Nothing further from the state? This witness to be released or retained. He's free to go. Defense? No objection? I can, I can be released. You're free to go, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I'll retrieve your exhibit. Yes. Yes. Next witness? State calls Su Suzanne Bukoffer. Suzanne Bukoffer. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Would you state your name for the record, please? Suzanne Bukoffer. And would you spell your last name, please? Yes. It is B as in boy. U C H H O F is in Frank E R. And Ms. Bukoffer, where do you work? Lee County Sheriff's Office. And in what capacity do you work with the Lee County Sheriff's Office? I'm an analyst. And uh, have you received, well, let me just start with what type of uh, analysis do you do? In what area are you an analyst? Currently or my entire Currently. career? Currently, I work in the narcotics unit. But in the past, where have you worked? Uh, I have been assigned to district analysis, uh, the gang unit, and I was temporarily assigned to major crimes. What type of training and experience do you have? I've taken several classes and analytical techniques over the last 16 years. And when did you uh, attend college? Yes, I did. And what was your degree in? Computer information systems. And did you have any post-undergrad uh, work? Or have you taken any post-undergrad courses? Uh, just training through the Sheriff's Office. And have you had training in terms of um, the use of various softwares? Yes, I have. Did you receive from the digital forensics... So I want to go back and talk about uh, starting in 2015. Did you receive at some point after June of 2015 information from the Digital Forensics Unit um, in the form of a chart containing information regarding a GPS uh, download? Yes, I did. And did you also receive phone records with historical precision location and phone record data? Yes, I did. Did you receive um, those, those type of records for a number 573-864-1179? Yes, I did. What's the difference between historical precision location records and phone records? Phone records would be phone calls, text messages, and data usage, including the tower that handled the event. Um, they're commonly called CDRs, or Communication Detail Records. Uh, historical precision location refers specifically to the AT&T report, which is their best estimate of the location of the phone. Did you use software to try and analyze or develop um, an understanding of or a visual display of the information that had been received regarding these phone records? Yes. And what programs did you utilize, or what software program or programs did you utilize? I used Penlink and ArcGIS. What is Penlink? Penlink is software used primarily by law enforcement agencies. Uh, it assists in excuse me, analyzing phone records. Um, it accepts phone records from all carriers um, and assists in allowing us to run reports to see how many calls to a specific number, how many calls total, how many are voicemail dials, you know, how many are text messages, that kind of thing, and lets us look through the records much easier than a hard copy. Does it allow you to sort records? Yes. 
What is, uh, you said ArcGIS, what is ArcGIS? ArcGIS is a industry standard mapping program used by many local governments and private companies. Uh, if you've ever gone to the Lee County Property Appraisers website and pulled up a parcel and looked at the map, that's powered by ArcGIS. to show you what has been marked for identification as States Exhibits 109 through 114. Um, and you had a chance to review these before you came into court, correct? Yes. So let me start with, were these developed using the data that was provided you through the Digital Forensics Unit um, and or the AT&T records for, I know we already talked about for two phone numbers, the 573 and the 727 numbers. We didn't talk about the 727 yet. Then let me go back and ask you, did you receive historical precision location records and phone records for a phone number that was 573-864-1179? Yes. And did you receive that same information for a phone number 727-421-7736? Yes. And did you develop these exhibits using that data and the data that you were given from the Digital Forensics Unit? Yes. And was that data put into your into ArcMap in yeah. developing this? Yes. Um, now, that data that you were used, the historical precision location data, um, was that data received from AT&T? Yes, it was. Does AT&T provide a disclaimer in that data? They provide a disclaimer at the top of every page of that report. Can you just uh, remind or let the jury know what that disclaimer is? Yes, I brought one with me. Would you like me to read it? That would be great. Thank you. It reads... The results provided are AT&T's best estimate of the location of the target number. Please exercise caution in using these records for investigative purposes as the location data is sourced from various databases which may cause location results to be less than exact. And is there a difference between less than exact and inaccurate in your, when you think about it? Sustained. Let me show you what's been marked for identification and what was previously shown to defense counsel as state's exhibits um, starting with 109 and going through 115. Okay. I'm going to start with, somehow as best as I try to start with. I'm going to start with states 109. Was this uh, were these two were these two maps that were produced using the ARC GIS? Yes. <clears throat> and was this from the data that you had received uh, for phone number 573-864-1179, as well as the recovered GPS data that was provided you from the Digital Forensics Unit? Yes. Move to introduce States Exhibit 109. Objection, scientific predicate. Noted for the record, overruled, will show it admitted. I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 10A. Was this a map that was created using the ARC, uh, the ARC software? Yes. And is this a map showing the historical precision location for 573-864? 1179, as well as recovered GPS data you received from the Digital Forensic Unit for a time period of 5.07 a.m. to 9.43 a.m. on June 28th? Yes. Move to introduce. Scientific predicate objection. Noted for the record, overruled, and we'll show it admitted. I'm going to show you 110B. Uh, What's been marked for identification is 110 B. What is this? 
This is more of the same maps that I created with ArcGIS. And is this a close-up of the information that was provided or displayed uh, in 110A? Or is this an addition to or a, a lower location in 110A? Can I see 110A again, please? Mm -hmm. That would be a zoom in. And this again was created with the the arc mapping software that you used. Yes. I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 111. Are these two maps that were developed using the AT&T historical precision location for that 573 phone number as well as recovered GPS? This time for the time frame on 628 from 9.45 a.m. through 6.45 p.m. and then from 6.45 p.m. to 11.22 p.m. It's 10.22, but yes. Ah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, moved to introduce State's Exhibit Number 111. Objection scientific predicate. Noted for the record, overruled. We'll show it admitted. States Exhibit 112. Are these maps that were created with the ARC, G, the ARC software showing both historical precision location, showing historical precision location for two phone numbers uh, on June 28th between the hours of 10.23 p.m. and 11.58 p.m., those numbers being the 573 we refer to and the 727? Yes. And what is the second or lower map that we see on States Exhibit 112? That is a zoom-in area on Bonita Springs from the top map. And then showing you what has been marked for identification as States Exhibit number 113. Does it, this has just historical precision location data information on it? Yes, and it's got the phone calls too. Some of the others have had phone calls too, but it would go. It came with the historical precision locations. And was this created with the ARC software program? Yes. Moved to introduce states exhibit number one thirteen. Scientific predicate objection. Noted for the record, overruled. We'll show it admitted. Did And I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification as States Exhibit Number 115. What is States Exhibit Number 115? It is more of the historical precision locations of the 573 phone number created with ArcGIS software. And uh, was this for the date June 29th of 2015? Yes. Um, moved to introduce States Exhibit Number 115. Check the scientific predicate. Noted for the record overruled. We'll show it admitted. One, I think we've done 114, 113. Move to introduce them. 113. I think it was 112 and 110. And 112 and 110. I renewed by making the same objections to that. Judge, I'd also like to add an objection to all of these that they're based on on doc, on information that came in that I previously objected to coming in, specifically the, the business record certification issue is how these were generated. So I want to make an objection to all of them. Noted on the record as uh, to both objections, previous and current, and uh, we'll show them admitted. That's what you had to 110 and 112. At 110, we had 112 not admitted. I don't have a 114 at all. Neither do I. Okay. Neither do we. So we had 110 and 112 were missed, which we've just admitted. Okay. Okay. The state would move to change exhibit one, uh, exhibit number what's been uh, 115 to 114 to clarify the record, or we'll just skip 114. I have no preference. Whatever your pleasure. I'm going to make it 114. Okay. okay. So the last exhibit is being changed from exhibit 115 to exhibit 114. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, permission to publish? You may. Now I'm going to um, give the witness a, a laser pointer. Okay.
Now, Ms. Boomkoffer, when we begin to talk about this, if you need to step down so that you can be a little closer to see, please feel free. All I ask is that you keep your voice up because the court reporter needs to be able to record what you're saying. I understand. And I have left the laser pointer for you right here. The button, the little silver button, is what actually operates the laser pointer. What are we looking at in this particular, in State's Exhibit 109? What is being displayed in State's Exhibit 109? These are the historical precision locations and phone records of the 573 number and the recovered GPS. Um, I would need to move closer to read the exact date. All the writing is a little small for me for this distance. If you could distance. Your Honor, with the court's permission, if she could step down. She can step down. I will just ask that you enunciate loud enough for our court reporter, which would probably help if you stood sideways. Yes, Your Honor. to where that blue box is on the actual map on the lower it's right here. Now as we are looking at these maps we see little white boxes. What are those little white box what's contained within those little white boxes? <coughs> those are the dates and times of the historical precision location, the GPS record, or the phone record. So that's the information on which you based your plotting as you were at that's the information on which was based the plotting that was done in the ARC software. Part of the info, well, that's the label that came with it, and they were plotted based on their latitude and longitude. If you could, um, we could display States Exhibit 110A. GPS in the county between the hours of 5.07 a.m. and 9.43 a.m. And again, there are a number of little white boxes. And again, what do each of those boxes, what type of information is being presented? Uh, this is the date and time from the location record. So they point to a specific location on, the, they point to a, a location on the map which gave rise to um, that data. I've been, I have terribly asked that question, haven't I? You didn't sit there and decide that that's where they were at that particular time. That all came from data that was presented either through what you received from the digital forensic unit or what you received from the historical precision location records. Objection yes. leading. Sustained. And Judge, I'd ask that, that I have a chance to do my objection before the Yes, sir. And down at the bottom of that uh, diagram, what are we seeing? What is the yellow 120-degree um, wedge that we're seeing? This is a phone call made 
phone the 573 number that's outgoing to the phone number 314-244-7702 on 628 at 623 a.m. So are there any other phone calls that are reflected towards the bottom of the uh, map? That's the only one on this map. And I see, again, um, if you can point out different, and they're in your key, but different, I think I see what looks like a little um, satellite dish, and I also see little red boxes. If you could point those out to the jury again and let them know what they're reflecting. The little red cell phone is a historical precision location. The little green satellite indicated here is one of the digital forensic unit records. The orange wedge is the sector of the tower that handled the phone call. And these kind of bluish gray circles are the location accuracy or the confidence range if AT&T was able to assign one to each precision location. So what's a confidence range? Um, when AT&T generates the report, um, if they're able through their sources, they assign um, how confident their software is on the location of the phone. They, I've seen them range from 25 meters to 5,000 meters. And sometimes they're unable to generate one. That would be one um, like this one that has that. So if at t did not generate a confidence range, would that be reflected by not seeing a circle? Is that what you're saying? Yes. And States Exhibit 10B, what are we seeing in States Exhibit 10B? This is the same time frame as the map we just saw. Um, we have zoomed into the Benita Springs area to make everything more visible. And I notice as we are looking at this that one of your red little phones seems to be in the water. Can you talk to the jury about what that is? Are you referring to this one? Yes, I am. Okay, this has. And for the record, so, so the record reflects this. There's a little phone that's on the far left side of the exhibit, just below the halfway line. Yes, this label is 628-15-747-52. Um, the rest of these, um, as indicated, stand for multiple records. Um, this one indicates nine records between the time of 648 to 822. This one indicates 24 records from the time of 6.33 to 9.40. Um, likewise, this would be nine records from 7.03 to 9.42. And this would be 36 locations from 6.53 to 9.42. Would you like me to explain a little bit um, about why these vary? And Yes, please. So like the disclaimer said, AT&T will not guarantee that they can precisely pinpoint the location of the phone. And that's why that disclaimer is on the top of every page, and that's why they put their location accuracy um, as a meter range, because they say, it's probably here, but we're not entirely positive exactly. I think it's important to take these points as a data set and not focus on any one individual point, as AT&T says. Any one point could have an error in it from some of their other sources of data. So I usually consider this data as more of a trend. I don't object to speculation. <laughs> and when you're talking about you consider the data as part of the trend, what are you looking for? Or to what are you referring? Mostly, the more times the phone is located by AT&T in a general area, the more likely it probably really was there. Um, again, we see the uh, wedge that we see, the orange or yellow wedge, is that the same wedge that we saw on um, State's Exhibit 10A, but in larger form, but blown up? Yes, it is. 
So if you could just point to the wedge that's in 10A and then point to it in 10B. Now, I also want to know, and again, with your, with your boxes that have been located on this, they give uh, dates and times, is that correct? Yes. I want to hand you now what is uh, in evidence as States Exhibit 11. two maps. Um, they both contain the same phone and GPS information and um, historical precision locations. Uh, the time frames of the one on the left is 9.45 a.m. to 6.45 p.m. The one on the right is 6.45 p.m. to 10.22 p.m. Now, are we, do we see various locations in uh, Lee County on these maps? Yes. Um, do we see, uh, I think on either of these maps, have you posted what I would call, is there a Walmart that, that there is uh, location data beside? There is. Could you point that out to the jury? And is there a time reflected on that data for uh, June 28th? Yes, the time is 1059, 39 a.m. Now, since you mentioned that points have to be taken as a whole, that you don't want to look at an individual point, if you have a point that correlates to other data that's received, um, for instance, surveillance video, does that provide more confidence in an individual data point? Anytime more than one data source uh, agree on an instant, then I would give that more confidence. So uh, if the state had introduced a video of Mr. Rogers walking into a Walmart at that location at about that time, would that enhance your confidence in that particular uh, data point? It would. I think you talked about the more data points, the more confidence you have. Are there other data points reflected on this for which there is more than one call at any time? As you noted on one of our earlier records where there were nine calls, there were there were nine points, there were 11. Are there similar on this? Yes, there are some reflected of multiple historical precision locations, and there are um, phone calls and text messages. Can you point out where those are, say, on the left-hand side and then on the right-hand side of the exhibit? Um, starting with the left-hand side, um, this cluster of the red phones um, represents 11 precision locations ranging from 9.55.23 to 10.39.29. Um, there's an incoming phone call that the, this sector of this tower handled at uh, 11.28.01. Um, there are nine precision locations here with location accuracy unknown between 11.03 and 12.05. Uh, this cluster is representing five precision locations between 12.11.19 and 12.12.24. Uh, this is representing 25 precision locations between 12-16-41 and 6-44-12. Uh, this side representing 66 precision locations between 12-15-15 and 6-44-12 p.m. And this wedge is representing the sector of the call tower that handled incoming text message at 12-24-01, outgoing text message at 6-38-01, and incoming text message at 624. Uh, I'm sorry, 642. Now, is where is you're aware of where the wall, you're aware of where the Lee County Sheriff's Office headquarters is? Yes, I am. And are you aware of where the Walmart is right uh, near that headquarters? Yes, I am. Is that can you show for the ladies and gentlemen on this map where that Walmart is? Right. Could you do that again for just a moment? I'm sorry. And is that point reflected on the map itself? 
is there a, a place that reflects that on the map? Yes, this record. And is there a rest stop that uh, is in Lee County that is also reflected on this left-hand side of the map? Yes, the rest stop is located just off of I-75 and Daniels Parkway. And is that where you've indicated there were 20-some-odd precision location? Um, yes, there are 25 here that reflect this side of 75. There are 66 just on the other side of 75 that have no location accuracy. Now let's look at the other side. On the other side of the uh, of the exhibit, we see a time frame from 6:45 to 10:22. What are we seeing on the other uh, map? It's part of this exhibit. What a lovely. Um, this indicates taken as a data set and as a whole. Um, general southward movement through Lee County by the ANSA. Um, we start at the top. Um, around 6.46 or 6 p.m. and it generally moves this direction. There's a GPS um, search here and then the precision location continues. Here's one at 7349. Um, this represents uh, two incoming and two outgoing text messages from this sector of this tower um, ranging from 8.38 to 9 o'clock. Um, these records are continuing down four hundred and three of each. Um, this one represents 9 11, Outgoing phone call handled by the sector of the tower at 911. Uh, 918 is a little more south. 944, the records are further south. Um, at eight, there are eight precision locations at the furthest south point between 924 and 321. Thank you very much. Let's look at States Exhibit 112. And what does States Exhibit 112 uh, show us? The top map shows the phone records from the I-73 and historical precision location. Um, it also includes new data of the 727 phone number and the, um, between the times of 10.23 p.m. and 11.58. The bottom map is a zoom in of the most southern region of the top map showing the Benita Springs area. And when we look at this map, what what type of precision location information are we seeing and how much of it? If you could review that with us. We're seeing it from two phones now. Um, we've added um, the phone number 727-421-7736. Um, that one is reflected as yellow. Phone, um, phones, um, the sub-573 number continues to be red. The location accuracy for the 727 number are in this light greenish color. And um, phone calls um, and data usage reflects the green 727. So when you talk about in the light green, is that the confidence uh, circle that you were speaking of earlier? Yes. You can tell by the size. These are some of the 5,000 meter hits that were not very confident by AT&T. So their confidence is up, it's, they won't extend it any closer than 5,000 meters, is that correct? I haven't seen it past 5,000 meters. And so let's talk about when we look at the lower map. You have listed numbers of, um, a couple of points, a uh, number of phone calls or a number of times when there was precision location data. Can you tell us about that? These are all precision location. Um, the phone call and the data usage are on the other map. Um, they reflect both phones. Um, both of them are at this. This is a tower, and by the radius, we can tell it's one of the large, um, unknown, great, um, very large accuracy errors. Um, it includes both phones. Um, the rest of these are all the red icon of the 573 number. They vary from like the earliest was to be about 1027 and the latest 1144 p.m. 
Now, you have the uh, white boxes pointed to a specific location. Is that where the precision location data placed it? Just so we understand why. Sorry, let me just point. You have placed these, uh, this here. Is that where the precision location records placed it initially? Is that what we're talking about? Yes, they all reflect the latitude and longitude provided by AT&T. So that, that point right here in the center of the green circle is where the latitude and longitude reflected the precision location? Yes. And then the green circle around it is what you call the circle of confidence in terms of the range of where it could be? Yes. And are there any other... I notice on this that there is a blue circle right at the bottom of the second map, the lower map. What is that? Are you referring to this one? Yes. Um, this, like on a previous map where we were looking at Fort Myers Beach, um, it's a time one of the phones located kind of out of the norm, kind of further away. Um, and that's why instead of looking at one particular point, we look at them more as a data set. So there can be, a, would this be called an anomaly, or what would you call this? Uh, probably an outlier. An outlier. Let me show you what's been introduced into evidence at States Exhibit Number 113. States Exhibit 113. These maps reflect the historical precision location of call data for the 573 number um, on 629 to 2.32 a.m. and 2.42 a.m. on the left. And on the right, it would reflect the same information for the 573 number on 629 from 2.49 a.m. to 3.10 a.m. And what are we looking at on the map that's on the left-hand side? I mean, we see some wedges, we see some other little uh, the white boxes, we see some symbols. Can you tell us what we are seeing? This is the center of the tower that handled an outgoing phone call from the 573 number. This is the sector of the tower that handled the outgoing phone call from the 573 number, 2.43 a.m. Uh, this is a racetrack at 30480 Cortez Boulevard in Brooksville, Florida. And these are other historical precision locations um, ranging from 2.32 a.m. to 2.42 a.m. Now, we know from an earlier video exhibit, I think it's States Exhibit 71 A and B, that a person looking like Mr. Rogers was seen on a surveillance video at the racetrack about 2.31 in the morning. How does that, what does that do to your confidence regarding the uh, historical precision location? Judge Trill, this is for confidence. Overruled. Can the question? Um, he's going to tell me that while the confidence was pretty good, if that phone was in that person's possession at the time they're on surveillance, they were actually here at the racetrack. But you can see AT&T was really close on their best estimate. Even though it is outside their radius, they were still geographically very close. And um, let's talk about the second map on the other side. What can you tell us about the right-hand map that we see on States Exhibit 113? Uh, this red cell phone continues to represent the historical precision locations. They range from 2.49 to 3.05 a.m. This one up in the top corner uh, represents 3.10.22 a.m. And this is a Circle K shell at 2.055 West County Road 48 in Bush Elm, Florida. If we know from an earlier video exhibit, I think it states exhibit 72 A and B, that a person that looked like Mr. Rogers was at the Shell and Circle K at 252, 254 a.m. What does that, uh, how does that factor into your confidence with the historic precision location data? I uh, consider it a correlation, I mean the video um, from this location is very close to where um, there are several records. Um, these have no location accuracy.
accuracy, so AT&T was much less confident about those. Uh, and then you could take that one down. And then I'll just put this one up. Let me show you what's been introduced into evidence at States Exhibit 140. If you can tell us what we're seeing on States Exhibit number 140. This represents the historical precision locations of the 573 phone number um, and on 629. And do your boxes reflect from which direction that is the time and date, which direction the uh, phone was moving? Uh, the date starts on 629 at 12.01 down here in South Florida and continues in a northbound trajectory, I suppose, for lack of a better word. Um, here is 2.02 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Um, it concludes up in the Missouri area at 6.30.02. Let's see the latest record, Central Time. And is this part of what you talk about trend? When you talked about earlier about trend data or trend points, is this something that you would could speak to about trends? Uh, yes. I mean, um, as we as we look at every point, continues you know in a northerly fashion. So it makes sense that over time the phone, the phone was moving in that northerly fashion because they all kind of form a nice line up along these interstate highways. And finally, in the very bottom of States Exhibit 114, and I think it's also on your legend, we see a little blue box. What is that? Uh, it's a little blue house uh, representing 27034 Jarvis Road. Thank you very much. You can continue. You can We tender the witness. Good morning. Good morning. Um, your training um, is to deal with the data, correct? It's not how it's collected. Uh, yeah, to, to, analyze, to analyze data that I've given. Right. Now, you're not trained in cell phone towers, how that particular information is generated? Define how you mean it's generated. Well, let's talk about what much of what you have used relies on historical precision uh, location information, correct? That's correct. Is that correct. also known as NELOS data? That is correct. Are you trained in how AT&T generates that data? No. So you don't know whether weather conditions could affect that data? I haven't received any training on how it's generated, so I don't know. You don't know whether buildings, anomalies could, uh, could affect that data? Anything that I would probably say would be speculation. Okay. And um, you talked about outliers where you take a certain number of points in one location and then you've got another one that should be at the same time that doesn't match and you kind of eliminate that one as an outlier, you consider that to be the outlier? I consider it an outlier. Okay. So if weather conditions or certain situations cause data to be inaccurate, the outlier could actually be the correct one and the others could all be incorrect? It's possible. Okay. I have a question. In your map, a lot of them you used wedges. Um, those wedges don't indicate the distance, they just indir indicate direction, correct? Yes. Okay. Now on your map, some of the wedges appear to be about 90 degrees. Do you know why they're 90 degrees? That was the information provided by AT&T about their tower information. Okay. Now most towers have three sectors, correct? Not necessarily most. They can all be different. Okay. Um, if they had three... And if most had three, if a previous witness had testified most had three, would that distance be 120 degrees as opposed to 90? Uh, some of my training, um, I have learned that the towers are really calculated by the phone companies to individual areas. Some of them might have two sectors that span more degrees than others. They're not all 
perfectly divided. Okay. And um, on those particular maps, um, did you remove some excessive data points or things that you didn't think were necessary? Then what do you mean by data points? Were there things on that map, information that you removed, I believe you referred to it previously as excessive ones? Objection to the form of the question on that map, and the states introduced Exhibits 109 through 114. On some of the maps. Extra labeling boxes were removed for aesthetics. Now, I want to talk about the, um, the accuracy. I think you, you've testified that there are questions as to the accuracy of the historical precision location data, correct? AT&T says they're not 100% sure on all of right them. On, right, the, right, bef right at the top of every page, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, um, you had one map that showed a point out in the water, correct? Yes. Do you have any reason to believe that that phone was out in the Gulf of Mexico at that point? I'm unaware of the phone's exact travels. I just use the data that I'm given. And based on the other data points you looked at, it would appear that that was an outlier, correct? It appears. That that was probably wrong. That it, point. Inaccurate. Inaccurate. Maybe something. Okay. It, it differed from the trend line of all the others. Now, AT&T also gives you some time, or always gives you a certain uh, level of confidence in what they're telling you, correct? Yes. And... In that particular one, the level of confidence would have, st there was a level of confidence, correct? I believe you indicated it was indicated by the small circles around there. May I see it again to be sure? Yes. Can you see from there? Can, everybody, can you see from there? I'll, if you could bring it a little closer, it would help. So I'm referring to this one. It, it indicates 628, 2015, 742, 52 seconds AM, and this is the record exhibit 110B. Break that point right there. Okay. That particular point does have a circle, uh, the, the small circle around it, correct? It does. Um, that means that AT&T's confidence level was that was to that range. Yes. Okay. But as far as, as far as your analysis of that particular the data surrounding that, um, that wasn't where the phone was. The data indicates with all the other records being on land, it's more likely the phone is on land. So really what, what all this does is gives you kind of a general location of the phone, correct? Yes. Now sometimes on there... On some of the maps, there are wedges, and there's, and on some there's circles. Um, where, where, did you ever use circles for for anything other than the confidence for AT and T? Circles were only used for the confidence level. So you didn't use circles for towers or anything like that. No. Towers were always wedges. In order for a phone to register or to give you one of those data points that's contained on any of the maps that we've looked at, the phone would have to be turned on, correct? I imagine it would. Um, it's not going to ping when it's off, correct? Correct. I've never seen one. AT&T can't get historical precision uh, location information with the phone turned off, correct? Correct. And obviously can't make a phone call or do a text without the phone being on, correct? Correct. If a phone receives a text, or if a text is sent to a phone and it's turned off, that's still not going to register until the phone's turned on, correct? In my experience. Taking a look at all the records you looked at, all the charts you prepared, 
Was there any indication that this particular phone was ever turned off during the time frame you analyzed? Could I see the first map, please, from 627? May I have the laser pointer again? Unless you want to bring it closer? You can bring it closer. Okay. May I stand and point? I don't have a problem with that. Whatever her pleasure. I did notice this section um, on the uh, 629 map, um, it was a pretty solid line, for lack of a better word, all the way back. Um, this map does have a section where there are no historical precision locations through the state of Tennessee. Would that, could that be because the phone was off or could it be for other reasons? It could be for a, probably a number of reasons I would have to speculate. Okay. And this is on 629, correct? No. no, that is 627. 627, I believe you said 629. I referred, 627 I referred to 629 as not having any um, spaces where there was a lack of data. So, for example, I know, I know you said it was speculation, but um, some of those reasons could be there weren't a lot of towers there, correct? Correct. Um, that, that just basically that nothing attached to it at that point. Yes. Judge, that's all the questions I have. Uh, you indicated to council that you had taken off extra labeling boxes for aesthetic purposes. You didn't remove data points, did you? No. Um, when I enabled labels by the software, uh, the software tries to be very helpful and label as much as it can without overlapping boxes and to still show you as much as it can. But it labeled so many because we had so many data points that it was really overwhelming to look at. So I just removed extra label boxes um, to make the map clearer to read and avoid an overwhelming effect of boxes. But all the data points remained on the map? Every data point remained on the map. You know, Mr. Darrow was asking you some questions about um, the outlier on state's exhibit. I think it was 110B that's the confidence level that is right up to the beach. Um, somebody can walk on a beach with a phone? Yes. Somebody could walk out into the water up to their knees to pick up a shell with a phone? Yes. I have nothing further, Your Honor. No more questions. Is this witness to be released or retained? Released, Your Honor. Released. You're free to go. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, can we take an a, a early lunch break to the state and uh, call its next witness? Can both sides approach for a moment? Ready. The next witness is going to be quite lengthy, and so rather than start and stop that process, we're going to go ahead and take an early lunch break. I'm going to ask that you not talk about the case among yourselves with anybody else or look up any of the people or places involved. And why don't we have you come back at 115. Please be seated. Anything else from the state at this time? Defense? Well, you won't have your witnesses here, right? Well, I would be inclined to, to, to wait till Monday as a courtesy to you guys, unless you have a witness available before then. We still have motions as well and other issues to take care of. I'll be surprised if we have it all completed by the end of the day today or regardless. Okay. Okay. See everybody at 115.